Let's go! Oh, yeah. Are we going to have a season next year? Everyone's talking about that. Let's put that off to the side. Today, as I tighten up this microphone, part two of the LSU Offensive Line Series. No, offensive line play is boring, but we're going to make it fun today, okay? At the end of the video, all these questions I get about LSU needs to recruit more offensive linemen. I get it all the time with Chat Sports. Only three linemen committed last year. Orgeron's doing something on the slick, and it's why you shouldn't panic about the lines. That's coming up at the end of today's video, okay? So stick with me. Now, if you haven't watched the offensive line film study, go on ahead, check that out. You can find the link, this gray thing. It's somewhere up here. Or you can find it in the description below. I showed you what the 2020 offensive line looked like. There is something fascinating that could be pretty historic if Joseph Evans ends up being the starter over Liam Shanahan. We'll get to that in just a moment. It has something to do with the mastermind, Ed Orgeron. We have hit over 200 subscribers, and it wouldn't be without you guys. The community we're building with this deep LSU discussion is fantastic, including my man Judah, who said he's been listening to me since my old LSU podcasting days. So look at this gray hair. I'm old. Thanks, Judah. Thanks for telling me I'm old. Also, uh, DBU7, love that name. And of course, shout out to Alex, who also talks about my canceled podcast. Joseph Evans, let's say he ends up starting on the LSU offensive line at either guard or center. That would mean LSU would be starting three former defensive tackles on the LSU offensive line or defensive tackles according to 247 Sports. So why is that relevant? Well, Ed Orgeron has figured something out. See, college football has changed. How your offensive linemen have to block has also changed. We talked about this in the last episode. LSU runs a passing-based offense. Lots of five wide, lots of shotgun, which means your offensive linemen have to be pretty athletic. They have to be nimble to face the fast pass rushers you get in the SEC. Orgeron has adjusted, and he's made his linemen far more athletic. The way they developed their linemen has obviously changed as well. A lot of credit has to go to James Craig and Bill Johnson, who are the actual line coaches, but Orgeron, who knows linemen like the back of his hand, has done such a great job developing the trenches. Plus, something else about the offensive line that I love is they're not highly ranked players. Yes, that Joe Moore award-winning group that was so fantastic last year. Let's take a look at them. Sadiq Charles, four-star, number 262 national, number 18 offensive guard, played left tackle. Adrian McGee was an offensive tackle, a three-star, and he played left guard instead of tackle. Lloyd Cushenberry was way off the radar, ended up being arguably the best LSU center ever. At right guard, you had Damian Lewis, a JUCO transfer, who was an unranked defensive tackle coming out of high school. And Austin Deculus was the only elite offensive line prospect that started last year. And guess what? This year would be nothing different. Let's say Shanahan ends up starting at center. Unranked player. At left tackle, Dare Rosenthal, a former defensive tackle, a former four-ish three-star player. At left guard, you have Ed Ingram, who was a fairly highly ranked guard prospect. But Jason Hines, a former defensive tackle. And as you see, the two players that are backups at right guard for right now is Anthony Bradford and Cardell Thomas, who actually were higher ranked offensive line players. So it goes to show you continuity and versatility is what matters if you want to play on the offensive line at LSU. A lot of that is, is character building. You know, if Ed Orgeron recruits you and you recruit it as a defensive tackle, 
defensive line is funner than offensive line. To be a player like Chase and Hines and do what's best for the team, that's pretty good character from those guys, and it shows how Ed Orgeron could get guys to buy into the LSU program. There are so many defensive linemen that would transfer immediately if they were told they're going to play offensive line. So what does this mean about recruiting? You talked about that earlier in the video. You shouldn't panic if LSU only brings in a few offensive linemen. Now, the Tigers did get a huge 2021 commit in Garrett Dellinger, but that shouldn't matter. LSU's killing it on the transfer market with Shanahan and Damian Lewis. LSU can also flip a defensive lineman and make them a starter in the SEC. Oh, let's say Eric Taylor from last year's class doesn't get a lot of playing time. That kid is one heck of an athlete, and he could easily play the opposite side of the ball. And Orgeron could make an easy pitch to him. Hey, did you see uh, Damian Lewis? He was... Unranked as a high school player, but as an offensive lineman, drafted. I think that's what Orgeron was going to do with Cameron Jackson out of Haynesville, but grades or whatnot, he ended up going to Memphis. Orgeron's innovating. You know, offensive line has changed. And honestly, most defensive linemen played the other side of the ball anyway in high school. Boom! Can you believe that? Three former defensive linemen potentially starting on the LSU offensive line? Like, I'm curious, have, has any one of you ever seen that? I, I don't know. I, I honestly don't. So let's have a discussion in the comments. We're trying to build the community. In fact, uh, we've had a few people actually reach out to potential uh, brands that want to work with us. So I've, I want to do this to provide you some LSU commentary from a slightly different angle, so I appreciate all the love. This is my first video, not in an LSU shirt. I just realized that. This is Derek Jeter, but that doesn't mean I'm not doing Yankees content. Check it out on Sports Gems, where we make sports collecting fun. We're giving away all kinds of good stuff on that channel, including... Let me go over here and get this. On Sports Gems, we're giving this out. Yeah, the greatest catch of all time, Odell Beckham Jr. We also have the uh, Certificate of Authenticity. So this isn't just some autograph. Go over on Sports Gyms. We're doing a series on Funko Pops. Here is a, a Mookie Betts Funko Pop right here. Look, it was legit the fingertips that barely, barely held on to the football. So... Shout out to you, Oda. But yes, please keep subscribing. I want to get to know all of you guys. Just comment below and uh, let me know where you're watching from. It's Power Hour LSU. Boom! Ba, ba, ba!